of God, the master, is on me. Because God anointed me. He sent me to preach good news to the poor. Heal the heart broken. Announce freedom to all captives. Pardon all prisoners. God sent me to announce the year of his grace and celebration of God's dis destruction of our enemies and to comfort all who mourn, to care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion, give them banquets of roses instead of ashes, messenger of joy instead of news of doom, and a praising heart instead of language spirit. Redeem them out of righteousness and I just read Isaiah 61, 1 through 4. Bow your head as I pray. Father, I come before you once again. I come there, God, because I realize your spirit, your anointing is upon me. And I thank you for this week, dear God, where you have instilled in me, dear God, a new attitude and through my virtual services and all the, I guess you call, I was involved with this week. I felt you, God, as seeing a deeper revelation and insight of what you are saying for our ministry here in this community. So I'm so glad to know that God, that you, their father, give me this opportunity right now, this hour, all those that God that will join on WOPFM on 99.9, .9, their God, um, 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 the, the Facebook or later, you ordain them, their God, to, to be hear my voice because my voice is your voice and i'm so glad to know you live in me you live through me you live around me and you direct my path and i'm just so excited dear god jesus knowing dear god that i can depend on you when i come in this station i know dear god that you have anointed me you are in me you speaking through me so i thank you lord that i could depend on you to speak i could glad to know dear god that i can be obedient to just say what you have to say their father actually the blessed here in Cleveland, Tennessee, their God. Bless us, their God, all those that are praying, all the prayer in January with the Church of God, a prophecy there, whole white wing was dealing with prayer. All those intercessions with the Church of God and the Church of God saying, all those that are praying, the Sanctified Church, the Holiness Church, the Baptist, the Catholic, the Anglican, every denomination. We are praying for the kingdom of God. This is the headquarters, this Jerusalem Acres, Cleveland, Tennessee. Many of you listening under the sound of my voice, we want you to know that prayer is being lifted up in this community and we thank God for it. We pray for our governor Lee. We pray that God for our mayors, our two mayors, Davis and, and, and Brooks. We pray for the chief of police, Gibson. We pray for our city school council, all of those involved in civic work, all our priests, our pastors, our leaders. I come in the name of Jesus and I declare and I declare victory in Jesus. Victory. We got to know, we glad to know that God that you're with us. And we pray for the missionaries. We pray for those that go out of this community to bring the good news. We pray for those that coming to this community. We pray that God for the seven continents. We pray in the name of Jesus. I thank you Lord that I could concentrate on prayer. Prayer today. We're going to be talking with prayer. So tag someone get your Bible because as I said the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach and I'm going to preach and I'm going to teach and do whatever he tells me to do. So you get ready and get someone. Now I had some other. Welcome again everybody. Like you know this is Saturday. The most significant are here in Cleveland, Tennessee because many of you I see you in the community, and I appreciate your comment. Like you said, you, you look forward to the station. Anytime we have a little situation, just remember God is in control. God is in control of everything, and he will help us because we had some power, like the technician said, with the storm that came through. So last week, we understand, and I got my Facebook. I'll be on Facebook, open my Facebook, because when God speaks, I don't need to be in here. He speaks through me. I got my little, own little, we have our Facebook. You all know what I'm saying. But go with me because... Some things was changed in the teaching, but I'll be talking about prayer. The hindrance says some hindrance. How your prayer could be hindrance when you're not um, um, following the scripture. But what I'm going to go first is through this booklet here. This is powerful prayer of the Bible today in the word. One of my um, devotion book I use. Because I want you to see the various prayer on how you could increase. I'm going to leave the hindrance part for later. I want you to realize that God is speaking to us. I mean, for you to really... Decree and declare anything over your life. You have to know how to pray it. You have to be, you have to get into the word. So um, th these prayers, I'm, I'm going to come to Jesus' prayer later. I want to start with the prayer of Hannah. 
Okay, I'm going to be charting out because this just came to me this morning. The other lesson I had on hindrance of prayer with the other book, I'll pick up some of that later. Or well, I said, stick with some of this book here. Hannah's prayer, okay? Although, let me start you. God answer her plea. Like some of you all know Hannah. She loved her husband and she prayed for a child and she went through a lot. She, scripture tells us that God chose Hannah's womb, but Hannah's deserve uh, and desire became as strong that she promised God that God will grant her a child and she will surrender a child back to Yahweh, which is God. Now, I'm going to be dropping in between. Many of you, you told God, okay, you told God, God, if you do this, I'll do that. Now, you made a plea, you made a bag. I don't know how you do this with God sometime, but God, Hannah, we look at Hannah's story. Go into 1 Samuel 2, 1 through 10. Like I said, I'm gonna, I have a lot in the front of me to talk about. But when you, when you tell God something, you better hold your plea. And when you make it and respond, this is what happened. In regard, answer her plea. Okay, she pleaded with God. She pleaded with God and God didn't respond. God indeed dedicated Samuel to the Lord and handed him over to Eli the priest. Okay, with tremendous courage, it must have taken Hannah to surrender her answer prayer to someone else. The prayer we read today is very personal of Hannah. She cried. She said, my God, my God, you know, my horn, my mouth. See our mouth. Open our mouth. She used her mouth as a horn. We see that it was Yahweh, not Samuel, who was the ultimate foundation of her joy and strength. For Hannah, there was no one like the Lord. Okay? Safety, comfort, and justice. And found in him. She realized it was God who answered prayer. Thanks for joining Bishop Patterson and Sister First Lady Williamson, my sister and brother-in-law in Freeport, Grand Bahama. We appreciate you joining. What I'm saying now, I'm talking about various kind of prayers in the Bible. Okay? How you, who you can emulate to pray after. Let's get to the Bible. We know we have many uh, pastors, teachers today, but get into the Bible with know how to pray. Okay, I'm jumping forward to David's prayer. David praying part one. Okay? And yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty, the splendor for everyone in heaven and on earth. That's First Chronicles 29, 11. Okay, I'm going to drop down through this book. As David point in life, David, boyish, good looks, had most likely turned to wrinkles. Okay, his ruby face and his hair turned gray. He was used to being able to run for miles. Now he had to stop to catch his breath when climbing up. You know, flight of stairs. One last task he had before leaving this world was to build a place of worship for God. This is David now. So he drew plans for a magnificent temple. But the Lord informed him that because he was a warrior, okay, he wanted someone else to build it. So David rolled up his blueprints, gave them to his son, and then addressed the whole assembly with a prayer to God. This is a prayer. And powerful, in this prayer, David he proclaimed that the Lord deserved the praise because he is our God. Okay? That's in verse 10. He deserved it. Okay? He deserved it. Who reigns with greatness and power? We have become so accustomed to the things God created that we often focus on our attention, on our human accomplishments. But God created everything and therefore everything in heaven and on earth is his. Okay? God's creation display his magnesty, splendor, and Power. For instance, just 10 seconds of the sun power, which God created, have enough energy and power to entire world for 100 years. See how powerful God is? God is head and over all and the ruler of all things. David recognized Yahweh's characteristic and attributes and praise. Okay, he prays it unshimmingly. You go into David, you see David even prayed out of his clothes. Unshimmingly, and that's what we need to get to the, until his last breath. We need, even as we baby boomers get older and older, keep praying, praying. Some of you say, I've been saved all my life from 10, 11. Keep praying. Keep praying till your last breath. This is what we need to learn from David. He had a proper perspective of God which produced praise. And his praise continued to echo today. You see, we need to leave something, baby boomers, and those above. We need to leave prayers. Let people know how we pray. They need to see how we pray. So I echo I, I, my parents. My mom, I could still hear her praying. She's gone and going. My dad, he still pray. He's 95, still live. Prayer of your parents, your teachers. We need to remember what we are leaving for people to echo and understand. This would say, God created everything. I want to make sure that he had a proper perspective. You need to get, a, you need to get the right perspective of God, which produced praise. 
Okay? Understand this is all about God. What we are doing. Okay, I'm going to go into another part of David's prayer. Okay? David, it says here, David recognized that all the wealth on Israelites, all the wealth of the Israelites were able to provide for the building of the temple was actually from God's hand. Okay? It was from God's hand. He recognized this raw, humble, he said, sentimental and, 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 and brick rock and all these biblical stewardship. Throughout David's prayer, he teaches his son, okay, his people and us, that God is beyond generous. Now, some of you experienced that. Even through all this pandemic, God has been good to you, and you need to give him praise. He has generously blessed you, kept you safe, kept you alive. You still got bread in your body if you listen to me. So you have to understand, these are David's prayer. Read First Chronicles 29, 14 to 20, okay? The right response on our part is to be generous. David also remind his people that even though they were living in the land, they were still foreigners and strangers, and that the only right to the land was through God's provision, his sovereignty. God, David said that at the heart of generosity ought to be integrity and honesty. That's another thing God was saying. We need to be honest and integrity, okay? For him, he motivate, dedicated, and the motion. David concludes by getting to the heart of the matter, which is ultimately a matter of the heart. He requests that the Lord help his son heart, his son's heart, and the Israelite heart, and to us to fix on Yahweh. We need to know that. We need to depend on God. You can learn so much and go in Psalms and David. You will see. We need David cried out with his heart. He cried out. We have to understand that. We need to keep our eyes fixed on God. He's the one who's going to help us. Okay, Solomon's prayer. We can go into Solomon. This is in 1 Kings 3. 1 through 15. He says here, give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. And that's what I pray every day. I say, Lord, I want to discern you. Every day it's a new something to discern. And I want revelation insight from you. Because when I work with people and when I, people call me and things going on, I want to hear from God for your situation. I can't just tell you, I said, wait a minute, let me call you back. Let me think about it because God got to give me an answer. You know, so when we minister to people and tell me we got to make sure it's coming from the heart of God. And Solomon prayed for wisdom. And we'll see this. And I'm gonna, I guess I'm skipping a part of it. Solomon was now king of Israel, but I had not yet finished rebuilding the temple. Solomon, like other Israelites at that time, went to most important high places in Gideon to make sacrifice to the Lord. While there, the Lord came to Solomon in a dream saying, now some of you, you need to hear God's voice in dreams, just like Solomon. You need to know the voice of God and distinguish what is God's voice and what is man's voice. Okay. He asked whatever. This is what the Lord said. While there, the Lord said to Solomon in a dream saying, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Is God asking you that today? Come on now. What is God saying to you? Can you imagine what reaction would be if God asks you? Come on. What will you say? What will you ask? Would you ask for wealth, healing, longevity? What will you ask God for? Come on now. Solomon began his response by praising God. That's what God wants us. By praising God, he began. You have shown greatness to your servant, my father David. Then he acknowledged the continued kindness God had shown to him. Solomon acknowledged, okay, that the Benedict covenant was continued to be fulfilled to him. See, we got to continue in our children. We have to make sure, pastors, teachers, parents, that we are passing on to this new generation. When I travel and when I see things, I'm telling you, when I look in the faces of some people, people are downhearted. Some people are depressed. They're oppressed. Whatever. We need to help these people when we go in the malls, wherever we go with our masks. What are we doing? You know, yes, we still need to wear our masks, but we do need to, some of us need to get out, get out, get out. Put your mask on and get out. And do what God called you to do. You can't stay in the house for two years. You got to get out and, and see what God is saying. Just wear your mask and lay out on someone's feet and rebuke. If you got the power to authority in you, we need to rebuke some spirits. Demonic spirits. He was barely out of his teens when he took the throne. So it, it was no surprise that he felt overwhelmed with the responsibility of governing the nation. Okay? Solomon continued and did not ask for wealth. So he had wisdom. He was a mind trained of God. And that's why we need to be training the word. Know what the word is telling us. Okay, like I just read, this was Peterson Bible. I read that. Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And he anoints you. And he has your hands upon you. And I want you to grasp that. God anointing. 
And his presence, when you move, where you go, you should be carrying his presence and his anointing with you. And you could do whatever you ask, whatever you wish. It's God, it's not you. You have to understand that Solomon continued and did not ask for wealth or, 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 or even he didn't even ask for happy life. But rather he gave a mature request. Give your servant a discerning heart. And that's what I want you to get today, a discerning heart. Okay? Because when you have a design, you can design any boy. You can design people. You can design animals. You can design what the future. You can design a lot of things as God reveals it to you. Okay? The word designing can also be translated hearing from God and being obedient. Solomon was asking for the captivity to obey God's law and distinguish it between right and wrong. That's what we need to know. So this world today, what's wrong? They, they say it's right. What right said is wrong. We, we have to understand we need to teach people. We need to help our family, our friends, our co-workers, where we meet. Let them know God has called us as leaders. He has a place upon us. He wants us to be his hands, his feet. He said, go ye into all the world, W049. FM, my community, this is why I'm on. I want you to know in this community, God has people praying for us. And he wants you to know that he loves you and he cares about you. Whoever listening, the same thing. God wants you to know. And people will come to you and you listen and obey. Solomon was asking for the captivity to obey God's law. And this thing, he recognized that the best thing for him to do was to stay in step with the law of God. And that's what we need to stay with God. In return, godly, richly, bless him humbly. Humble himself and seek wisdom. Okay? Wisdom. I, I'm not going to elaborate no more on that because you need to read that. Okay? And then now we're going into prayer with um, this. This is another part of Solomon's prayer as he was building the temple. 1 Kings 8, 27. But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. Okay? In our text today, Solomon began by acknowledging the matchlessness and faithfulness of the Lord. In his prayer, he emphasized God's power and magnitude. The Israelite built a temple for Yahweh, but there was no human-made structure that could possibly contain God's greatness. Okay? So ever saw him pray, when Solomon prayed, that the people's supplication would be received by the heir and eyes of the Lord. We need to focus on God, not all these big structure. Yes, we need this building. Yes, we need our church and our mind. But you have to keep your eyes on the Lord. Solomon intercede on behalf of the nation. Okay? And he re and and he reinstates their relationship to the Lord, Yahweh. What stand as the um in between us and the dispute between our neighbors? He will be the one who they would ask for mercy when the nation sinned. Okay? was defeated in battle or when others um atrocities that came their way even while celebrating a magnif magnificent temple solomon's prayer emphasized the needs for forgiveness okay let's get there now because that's what in part of the other part where it was telling us unforgiveness what's going to hinder us our prayer okay unforgiveness when you don't for uh, forgive and they talk about you know um, um, um that man who owes somebody you know and won't pay back, but yet he wants someone else to pay him. You know, we have to understand, let's get rid of unforgiveness, okay? Even though the temple was built by human hand, Yahweh was the chief architecture. God is chief in everything we do, okay? He is our, our, our architecture. He's our heavenly father. He's whatever we want and need him to be. God's Solomon's prayer reminded his people that all of them have sinned against God. Solomon's prayer reminded his people that all of them have sinned against God. That's 35, verse 35, 46 through 49. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why each day we have to understand that each day we need to seek God, we need to pray. The Bible said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallow and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation. Lord, deliver us from evil. For thine is the king. So we got to know. The good news is that God only forgives sins. But also, let me read this right. The good news is that God not only forgives sins, but also delight in dwelling with his people. That's why he's 50. He loves us and he wants to dwell with us. Okay, Jabez. Remember Jabez prayer? That was big popular back 10 years ago. Jabez, he prayed. In 1 Chronicles 4 and 10, oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. Many of us pray that many times. We want God to bless us. We want him to give you one. This is my next thing. But listen, this man, he was born in poverty. This man, uh, um, Jabez, let me skip through this. Jabez was held 
Okay, first Chronicles um, contain a general. However, the authors break slightly to communicate to the readers that Je um, he was a, his name was Jabez, a descendant of Judah. He was more honorable than his brothers. Jabez was held in high esteem by the Lord because of his ability to rely on God even in the midst of struggle and pain. That's what God is calling you to be like Jabez. In the midst of whatever going on, Many of us go into pain. Some of you know you lose your job. You lose this. You lose that. God going to bless you double. Listen to Jabez, okay? He, in the midst of that, his ability to rely on God, even in the midst of struggle and pain, you rely on God. Okay, Hebrew word that sound like pain, and author let us know that his mother named him because she was going through some pain when she was carrying him. So be careful how you're naming your children because, okay, the Lord said to Eve, I will give you, this with the Lord, the Lord make you, Pain and childbearing, even severe, painful labor. Many of us know we had our kids. That's what the Lord gave us. Okay? So Jabez's story, his mother, pain for everybody. That was part of the punishment. However, the pain Jabez's mother struck was him. And he lived a life of pain. All you imagine someone living a life of pain all their life. He lived a life of pain. Jabez asked God to bless me. So even in the midst of your pain, come on now. In the midst of it, come on. In the midst of it, now I'm praying in a minute for you need Jesus. In the midst of it, no matter, you need to pray and ask God to keep him and free him. Whatever your circumstances, some of you say, my born this and I born this way and, and this thing and you're buried and all, don't worry about it. You're here and God is saying, bring it to me and I'll help you. He's sovereign, okay? He's sovereign. He's a sovereign God no matter what. God is in control. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, Hezekiah prayer. Hezekiah, Romans 8 and 31. What then shall we say and respond to these things? If God is for us, my God, who could be against us? When you have the Heavenly Father for you, you don't have to worry about people. You don't have to worry, okay? This is, I'm going to skip up to some of this. They have been ruthless. But let me read all this because you may need to hear his story. People love an underdog story when a downtrodden person conquers great obstacles and transform into a hero in today's hezekiah is the underdog okay australia is set on the anchor on the, some of this i haven't read yet so you're bear with me this is australia australia is set on an attacking city of judah they had been ruthless the other cities they conquered treading them like animals come on now some of you may be going through stuff they were fixed on the people of judah in fact they were overly confident that they could defeat Judah. They sent Hezekiah a letter mocking Yahweh. Do not let the God you depend on deceive you, interfering that they have defeated other, other countries and their gods did not save them. But the Assyrians underestimated God. Yahweh, that's what they call him, the Yahweh. Don't you underestimate what God can do for you when you're in trouble. Don't you underestimate in your prayer. Okay? They did not realize that he is God alone. My God, my God, I felt that he is God alone. And don't you underestimate the power of Yahweh, our God. He is the great Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah, Nisi, Jehovah's alone. He has all powers in his hand and he could do all things. That's why we need to know how to pray. So, Father, I come right now in your name. I'm asking you that, God, Jesus, I pray right now. Those under the sound of my voice, if they don't know you, that God, we realize the season and the time we are living in. In. Many their God, Jesus, their Father, don't understand the signs of the time, but we have to bring it to their attention. They need to come to know you as their person. So knowing you, Jehovah, Jireh, even in the midst of their crisis, in the midst of their pain, they can find you if they will only cry out and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. No one, no one, no one, no one can treat you like Jesus. No one can do you like Jesus. You need to cry out to him, my brother, my sister who is listening. So right now, if you don't know him, I ask you to open Open your mouth and say, Jesus, I recognize you as the heavenly father. Say, Jesus, I want you, Lord. Come into my heart, dear God. I want salvation. I know you died on the cross for my sins. Forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Take away my sins. Wash me, Jesus. Purge me. I want to be a new person, Lord. I want to pray to you, Lord. Jesus, forgive me my, of my debtors, dear God. Jesus, forgive me, dear God. Oh, ask God to take it all away from you. And I will forgive. You will 
forgive those who trespass against you and forgive those who need to be forgiven. You have to do it so you can be clear. Don't that what hinder your prayer when you don't forgive and you don't forgive in Jesus' name and ask him to come into your heart and repeat that and tell someone you did that and you you, you find someone who can help you. You find me finish with Hezekiah now because you have to see it's her. He went to the temple, symbolically laid the letter before God and prayed. He laid the letter before God and he prayed. Yahweh, this is what he said. You alone are God. Okay, you alone are God. He's affirming God's sovereignty and his superiority. Okay? His supremacy. He passionately plead for deliverance from his enemy. Don't we have to do that sometime? Come on now. You have to plead and knock and ask. God is pointing to the letter. He said, listen to the words of um, Shamash. This is, this is um, Senesham. Your S H S E N N A C A. Sinner Sharab has sent to ridicule the living God. See, people, people think they 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 fighting against God in you. They 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 sending these enemies and sending their um uh, um voodoo and witchcraft and obeah and all these things against you. Listen to the story. Listen to the word. He has sent these. Ridicule the living God. They, 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 they think they could fight against God. They hand too short the box with God. You know, God, God is, 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 is out there listening to your prayer. It is true. The Syrian had conquered other countries before. Yes, and they had overthrown their gods, you know, their, their fleshly God into fire. But Hezekiah rightly point out that those gods were fashioned by human hands. So you have to understand this, my brother, my sister. Get to know God as your personal savior. Get to know him as a protector for you. So when your enemies come and people come against you, you can pray to God and God will take care of it. Because that's what Hezekiah do. He'll do the same for you. He's no respect the person. Okay? Listen to what happened in verse 18. Fourth century, the bishop um, As Asasius, Sirius, and Alexandria suggested instead of armoring ourselves with sword, we ought to extend our hands in prayer. That's exactly what Hezekiah did. Oh my God, I felt that. We need to know. How to conquer our enemies and defeat what we are going through. We can do it. Hezekiah went beyond request and relief and rescue because he was also conquered after Yahweh's reputation. You see, when people come against you and, and trying to say God can't do it, you show them. You show them. My God is able to do where I'm fine above. We could even ask or think. Concerning about Yahweh reputation, they cannot put God's reputation on, on, online because God is God and we have to let them know. Open our mouth. Therefore, as I pray that through God's deliverance, all the kingdom of the earth may know that you alone, God, are God. Okay? Verse 19. Hezekiah may have seen, seemed like the underdog to the Assyrians, but God was able on his side. And if God is for us, my God in Romans 8 and 31, you better grasp hold of that. Grasp hold of that. And in your mind, you lock it in. Lock it in and believe it. And keep it in your mind. Stop fighting against people. Stop fighting against humans. Stick to God. Okay, let me go to Daniel's prayer. Daniel in Daniel 2 and 20. Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are His. We have a great job. Okay? Daniel, like you know, he sometimes, for you all who don't know, Daniel was a dreamer. And he not sometimes walk about in the Corinthian circles. However, he did see him scriptures that time from time again, see him to dream, teach people about himself and communicate his glory for others. And the text, the Lord did that Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar and the world. You all heard the story about Daniel. For Daniel and his friend in the death, they were stuck against them. King Nebuchadnezzar requested to interpret dreams on humanly impossible. Humanly impossible and punishment was a spirit. So Daniel, Shamrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not only, not only did they knew how to do or how to pray. See, that's why you better know how to pray. So when people come against you and you go through some things, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Look at Shamrach, Meshach, Daniel, and Abednego. They, they, you better know how to pray. Have that connection, that communication with God. So when these things come against you, financially, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, physically, mentally, any way come, know how to call on God because these men, they knew. Together they sought help from God of heaven. 
this title used in time for the chapter. I'm gonna skip up through some of this. While the the the, the pagan and Babylonians worship their um luminaries and their um, um their Israelite worship God of heaven. You need to know how to worship God. God answered their prayer by revealing the mystery of the dream to Daniel in a vision. Okay, in a vision, God will show you visions. He will show it to you. Okay, thanks for joining me. I'm Princess Biden, my um, old princess. I go way back in Sunday school from the Bahamas. Thank you all. Listen, Daniel responded with a prayer of praise to Yahweh in verse 20. We have to know how to pray. His prayer begins by praising God for being eternal. Okay, okay, being eternal and all powerful and all knowing. He know everything. Okay, he emphasized that God is sovereign over all political affairs and, and, and people in, indeed. Okay, one who brings people in and out of power. Okay, God knows everything what's going on in these political, here in America, in the Bahamas, wherever these political leaders, we have to trust in God. Okay, God is able to do everything. And Daniel reminded, he recognized that the only God is the one capable of giving revelation and wisdom is by revealing deep and hidden things in verse 22. He will do the same for you, but you got to pray and ask him. He will reveal. Daniel was quick to give thanks to God, okay, for his ancestors, for the wisdom and, his, and, and what he discerned, okay? You have to thank God every day. The interpretation of dreams was nothing he did on his own or with the help of friends. Humanly speaking, it was impossible, but God of heaven provided salvation for them. Oh, my God. God, God is great. He is great, and he is awesome. I, I, before I go into another part of the prayer, it's a, it's a prayer here. Where it's, it's a prayer here. I want you, this is a prayer. And I'm going to pray this prayer because this prayer was touching for me. And this part of this is unknown, I think. It says, um, um, this King David in Psalms 144. When he writes, he said, bless the Lord who is my rock. He gives me strength for war and skill for battle. He is my loving alley, my fortress and my tower of safety. My deliverer in New Testament. Paul the Apostle commanded us to put on the whole arm of God in Ephesians chapter 6. As we ready ourselves to wage war against principalities, powers and rulers of this heavenly realm. Therefore, we must put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the blessed, the belt of truth, and the shoes of the gospel of peace, and take up the sword of the spirit, okay? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we need to be praying in the power of the Holy Spirit, always in the spirit, as we war against the devil with God, okay? His word and the angels as our confidence. We stand in firm agreement with Jesus in Luke 10. When he said, I saw Satan fell, I saw Satan fall like lightning. See, Satan, when he had the name of Jesus, you have to run. You just say, Jesus, he run. I have given you authority, he said, to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, my friends who are listening. My community and my family on Facebook and Bahamas or whoever listening, I can hear this later part of the world. Let me tell you what God has given you. Nothing will harm you. We also agree with the Apostle Paul who wrote in Romans 16. He said that God of peace will soon crash certain under your feet. And we will join with Jesus in his mission to destroy the works of the devil. According to 1 John 3, to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captive free. You in captive, you go into something, you could be set free. Believe that in Isaiah 6, when I just read a prophetically promise about God for you. You have to know it. We know that apart from you, okay, God, Lord Jesus, we can't do nothing. We have to totally 100% depend. Right now, I'm depending on God. I can't do nothing without him. I depend on him right now as I speak, as I pray, as I read. But we also know that we engage. Uh, um, let me read this right now. It, it, it says that we can do all things through Christ's strength. In view of this, we now set the rulers of the engagement of that enemy has to follow. We can give him some rules he needs to follow. The enemy has to follow us. We acknowledge that Jesus Christ has given us authority in heaven and on earth. Okay? Just on earth. As it is in heaven, as it is on earth. And he exercises his authority over his ministry session right now. Over our ministry that we have. We have to take the authority of what God has given us. Take your authority. Hold on to your authority. It is only in his authority. You got to have the authority of God, the word of God. God yourself, have on everything, your breastplate, everything, as we minister and as we go forward. Make sure you got it. You can't go preaching and teaching and doing things and you're not got it. Make sure you, 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 you have on your, your garments and everything. Here's the authority that we now, uh, and we confess, okay? 
Now, no, we're going to confuse. That's what we're going to confuse and shut down the enemy's communication system of God in Babylon, okay? And we're going to block the enemy's ability to overhear discussions of, of our ministry team. Let me tell you something. We have so much power, we don't take it. We don't take it seriously. And God is showing me some things. And honey, I'm taking mine. I'm going to encourage you, princess and buddy. And y'all, I'm telling you, you have to lock it in. Y'all being in Sunday school, we was not four and five years old. We grew up in church. We got more power now. We got to know. We got to teach others. We have to let them know. Let them know. Don't, don't Let's share our abilities. Let's share our gifts, our talents. Let's let other people know in our family member. Let's let them know. We'll tell our testimony what God has done for us. Let's show it. Let's show it. And let's express it. To let them know that we, 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 we can let the enemy, we can shut down his, his communication, what they do, just like the Bible said. And we forbid interference in, in, in what we are doing. We could, we could forbid that. We forbid any of those who come with vomiting with their uh, um, profanity and violence and, and all the things they're trying to do. We forbid it. Okay, for doing anything that come against and embarrass the name of Jesus and embarrass them. What we doing, we, we specifically bind up the spirit. Okay, we bind up in the name of Jesus and we confuse and running all those fatigue and downs, um, 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 uh, um, drownness and forbidding all of the spirits for influencing our name and trying to, 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 to separate us from God and say things about the Christian. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, we can declare and we can declare the blood of Jesus upon our life. We got to hold on to God's unchanging arm because at the cross, He did it. He suffered, He bled, and He died for us. And He is coming back for us. We need to let people know Jesus is coming back. And we need to be ready. And we need to let them know there's a heaven. We will live on. Let people know there is a heaven. Yes, and there's a hell too. But we want people to go to heaven. Okay? We specifically bind them up. Bind up what needs to be bind up. Cancel what needs to be canceled. In the name of Jesus, God has given us the power and authority to cancel demons. Cast it out. Open your mouth in the name of Jesus. He has given us power to heal the sick and raise the dead. Whatever. I know I'm healed from lupus. God has healed me totally. Hallelujah. No stream of blood. And I could tell my testimony. He has kept my mind stirring on him. He has delivered me from many things. He's healed my son, set him on the glory, and left four people healed. Four, four people to his life. I get testimony upon testimony. I could tell you what God has done, and i telling you he could do the same for you, but you got to believe the word, and you got to stand on it. Okay, don't let nobody tell you that it can't happen for you, what happened for me or somebody else. God still worked miracles, and the Bible talk over and over. He's willing that all should come to repentance, none should perish, and he's no respect of person, so know the word. We, we're going to bind him up, and, and all his, we bind up uh, um, 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 all the curses and the spirit that sent all those who come and investigate against what God is doing, okay, and what God is saying. We rebuke it. The report gonna be covered. We 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 gonna we gonna cast it out. All these satanic cults and groups and those that come, we cast it out in the name of Jesus. We command every demonic spirit and every um uh, um pearl spirit and all those that come against us. The attention and spoken and including hitting those who are hitting and hiding underground and bunker and those that go that seal off their ability and doing secret things. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ over this community. I come right now. You come in this community. I'm letting you know now the spirit of the Lord is upon us. This city is called the city with spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. And we have prayer warriors praying all over in this church of God headquarters praying all the time. People praying around the clock 24 hours. Our community is guided by prayer. We have pastors and leaders and all over praying in the name of Jesus, we cast no demons. So I'm letting you know right now, you need to surrender. You just need to put down your walk. You stop, put, put your weapon down and say, Lord, fill me with the, take the fruit of spirit. The, the, the fruit of spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering. Take that evilness out and all the hatred and the sin and put love, joy, peace, long suffering, generous. God is willing for you to come to him. Just like he did Paul on the road to the mosque. He stroked him down. Paul was persecuting the church. He was doing evil, and he could do the same. No one was worse than Paul. So, like I said again, he's no respect of person. Your evilness and your wickedness could turn around. Okay, that's what I want you to know. We love you, and we care about you, but we want you to know what the word of God is saying. This is the word, okay? All the heresies, and we cut off all, all, all evil spirits. We bind them up. We separate them in the name of Jesus. We, we cancel all the assignment against us, okay? We forbid any spirit from the body or the soul. 
We also forbid all backup system, those that backing up and, and, and those replace the spirit assigned to evict strongholds. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I come right now with a power and authority. Like I said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he's anointed me. Every week he gave me more and more strength and more and more insight and more and more, I guess you call anointing, to let you know that God has raised the people and he's still raising the people every day, every day to proclaim his gospel because he is coming back soon. And those who want to get saved will get saved. You know, and those who want to do, we got to help them get to Jesus. All y'all who interfering with what God is doing, I'm letting you know the spirit of the Lord, he's going to convict you. He also wants you to know, he commands us that there will only be one way traffic of evil. Um, he reminds you, um, you evil spirit, only one way traffic, only one way to the place where the Lord Jesus sent them. Okay, God going to rebuke it and send it out. A new spirit's going to come in you. So he command all spirit assigned to us to cut off spirit that's not complete into God, that's not connected to the Holy Spirit. Some things need to cut off, cut off some assignment. Okay, God is saying this. He is saying it. We forbid any appearance of, mag of, 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 of um, manifestation of any false or demonic Jesus. You know, okay, we forbid it. There's only one Jesus and one God. Okay, we forbid any ranch. A revenge against the name of Jesus. And anyone who come against God, people who are working, including our intercession, our family, and our friends, and our possession, our finance, our jobs, anyone, we ask in God, you know, and we declare, and we're going to decree those grounds to be ineffective anytime we or anyone else minister around us, okay? God is calling us, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get ready. I have uh, 20 more minutes. Uh, this is prayer. Uh, um, um, like I said, I, I don't know who... The order is, but sometimes you go online. I'm just telling you, and you can add to it because build a prayer journal. I, 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 I listen to people as they pray, and I listen, and, and a good one to listen to because she's one of my mentors. Um, some of you all who are listening talk to um, um, Sydney Trim. I recommend some people. I listen to a lot of different preachers, and I can call different ones. You know, I listen, and I, I learn. We learn from each other's prayer. We, 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 like they say, we learn, and we claim off each other, and we, we let God, Holy Spirit, you know, but we have to live our own life, and we have to pray our own prayer, because everyone is different, unique, but yet we can listen to people's messages and learn. That's what we have to understand. Okay, let me do two more of these prayer, two more of these prayer from the Bible. Okay, you see Elijah's prayer, Elijah. Okay, Elijah, 1 King 18 and 37. I told you all that they're going to be talking about prayer. Most of the time when I come on now, probably for the rest of the year, you're going to hear prayer. I have some speakers coming in for Father's Day and other time, you know, but God, God told me. He told me. And yeah. Okay, have it. This Elijah. I'm skipping through this. Elijah. Elijah. Okay, have you been in a situation when you felt underqualified? You feel pressure to act. Maybe people are watching, but you have no idea what to do. You are a person of prayer. You know your prayer. You may cry out and say, God, why did you bring me in this place? Why did you want me to do this? The prophet Elijah probably wondered about something similar when he faced King Ahab. And the prophet and Baal on the top of Mount Carmel, he found himself in the midst of dramatic downfall to determine who was the one true God, Yahweh or Baal. Oh my God, this is interesting. You all know this story. After hours of shouting out for the prophet of Baal, Baal answer us. He shouted, Baal answer us. There was no, there was still no response. Okay? And, and, and someone who listening right now, you may say, you know, I don't know God and I don't know who's God, but I know this God. But I'm letting you know right now. Listen to this story. We're going to see who is God. Because, cause, um, Listen to it. As evening approached, the sun began creeping down behind the tree, and the temperature dropped. The Israelites have been watching and waiting. See, people going watching me, waiting to see how you're going to respond. They saw the Elisha, they saw that uh, the old Elisha repair the trench and the drug and the wood he gathered, okay? All the stuff he brought, he dragged. Um, the bull he cut in the pieces. Everything was soaking wet. Elijah stepped into prayer. You heard that? He stepped into prayer. He stepped forward in and prayed. Okay? He may have been thinking, God, if you are going to show up, now is a great time. Have you ever been there? You really need God to show up so people can really see who you serve. I have done everything I can do, Lord. Now do what only you can do. 
And that's where some of you are right now. You only need to pray. Elijah prayer begin by emphasizing Yahweh covenant. He said, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. He then prays that Yahweh will turn their hearts back again so they will know that. Only Yahweh is God. That's why we and we in first, we all gonna need to read this. Who don't know it? In, in 1 Kings 18, chapter 18, 25 to 39. Then something amazing happened. Because I, I miss up some, some of the story. You gotta hear the full story. Because see, Baal had his God and he was trying to compete with Yahweh and God. Okay? Almost immediately. Have you ever been up in there? For the prayer came my mouth, God answered the prayer. Okay? Almost immediately, God responded with fire burning up the sacrifice on the altar. Even the water. The verdict was, the, 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 the verdict was in. My God. Some of you asking God for a verdict right now. I don't know what your situation is. You need a verdict on something. You better start praying so he could give you the verdict. Yahweh is the only true God. He's the only true God. Okay? My God. I, 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 let me see. I'm going to get one other prayer. I, they have a lot in here with David, so I'm going to go back. Oh, Jonah's prayer. Jonah's prayer. Jonah's prayer. When my life was um, embedded away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you. Jonah 2. And, and most of y'all know Jonah's story. In the middle of the sea, Jonah came to realize that his life was going to end unless he submit himself to God. And that's what some of you got to do. Just submit. Just surrender and say, Lord, you know, what's going on? In this world, we see all over the world, everybody, everybody, see what happened. Some places still shut down. Just surrender. This is the time now to surrender. God is trying to get your heart. He's trying to get us to, to, to come to him right now because, um, 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 the whole thing about it is this, is that no one can help, hardly no one could, you know, some countries trying to help in a way, man, have a, but what I'm saying, there's only one God. We see this in his prayer. Only person who can help us now is God. So we have to surrender. And that's what Jonah had to do, because Jonah's story, Jonah, all he needed to do, you know, surrender. Okay? And here in Jonah prayer is a Psalms of thanksgiving for deliverance. Why cling into life? Scripture was on his mind. His prayer, he recite the Psalms at least three times. In Psalms 80, 18, and 6, and, and 111. God's word was foundation of his prayer. And it ought to be as well. Okay? Jonah testified to God's deliverance in verse 3 and 7. And what appears to be almost a play-by-play -play account of what happened. In the climax in verse 7, we will finally surrender. When we finally surrender our lives to the Lord's will, he realized that he had been, you know, clinging for worthless idleness of selfishness and safety. The story of Jonah, how he clinged to that tree and everything. Okay, I'm just telling you, in doing so, he is turning the grace of God's love and availability to all. Okay, thankfully, he realized salvation comes from God. And the Lord provide a way for him to share that with the world. Some, some of you got, you like Jonah running, God called you to go preach. Go, you all remember Jonah, he tells Jonah to Nineveh. I, I skipped up Jonah's story and Jonah didn't want to go and what happened? You know, read the story. Go back to some of these stories because I can't get it all. I get 10 more minutes. Habakkuk's prayer. I only hitting some prayer because I want you to see there's a lot of prayers in the Bible. Google it up. Google it up. This is a book from um, Today's in the Word, one of my, um, 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 the, the ministry of this Moody Bible Institute. I do a lot of their devotional books and I get them. So what I'm saying, try and find out some prayer. The, the best prayer example to me is in the Bible, especially David's prayer. And you learn these prayers and you pray these prayers and put it in your perspective your everyday life and you will be blessed. Okay? For you to grow, you have to pray. You have to read your Bible. For you to get on a level where God want to take you, taking many of us, and you all can see it, uh, or you all who are online, and who will see this later. God is doing a new thing. He is raising up, even we who 60 plus who saying we semi-type retired. No, no, no. You got to get back more and go back doing some more preaching, knocking on some whatever it takes, what God is saying to you. I don't know. Mine is mostly through the virtual uh, and, and, and video and, and, and media, you know, for some place you can't go. But what I'm saying, I want you to know in the sound of my voice, you need to understand it, 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 it's, it's in Matthew, um, 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 the spirit of the, what it says now, go ye into all the world. That's 20 and 20, 28 and, and 19 and 20. He said, um, 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 go ye into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit, baptizing them in my name. And he said, 
uh, uh, um, I command you. He commands us to go, to go, and he can be with you. you. Go back into the scripture and find it, okay? I finished this Abaka prayer. I can do, let me see, Abaka's prayer. I can't, okay, it's Abaka's prayer. Finish doing this prayer. Okay, Abaka prayed, Abaka, Abaka, Lord, I have heard of your, friend, of your, of your fame, okay? He heard of the fame of God. I stand in awe of your deeds. Lord, he heard God pray. Don't you know God is famous? And he, he, he knows. Habakkuk prayed came shortly before the Babylonian, the, the Babylonian invasion of Judah. Facing his coming judgment, the prophet struggled with God's justice. Don't we all struggle with some things? Come on now, this is, this is a prophet. He, he struggled with it. However, Habakkuk wanted the righteousness remnant of Judah to keep his head high and to remain faithful to God even during the difficult days to come. That's all we got to do. We all dealing with something. Yeah, I, I stay with my prayer words and I go to my prayer meeting, my Wednesday night service, Sunday morning prayer, whatever. And that's what keep me. And I connect with a um, 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 few people online with prayer on my virtual through the week just for everything. My husband and I, we pray in our home. Then my daughter and her husband, you know, you have to keep prayer going. I say, we will come in my house, we got to have prayer. We got, you, and this will keep me. You see, and, and many of y'all could we relate to that. You, I know the Bible means say prayer without season. Honey, I go to bed sometime with a thing in my ears, listen to some prayer. Because I want good dreams. I'm just telling you, you have to, you have to, you have to um, guard your heart. Guard your spouse heart, guard your children heart, the dogs, the cat, the neighborhood, my neighbors. Protect. You have to protect your, your family. Your church family, we, you, this, is, this is a serious time we are living in. See, the devil know, and I don't want to talk much, but, but see, time is short now. Jesus is soon to come. We don't have the ever gone. We soon be back into the fall and Christmas. You see how fast time is going? We need to do the work of the Lord. The Bible said oh, the, the harvest is white, but the labor is a few. We need to get back into the harvest and go and do. Let me finish with Abaka. Abaka. See, Abaka, he realized some things. He concluded, Abaka, he had a problem with justice, okay? How Abaka wanted to do he had, he, he mean faithful and he doing his difficult days to come. He concludes his book with a prayer, expressing his unwavering trust. Oh my God. That's the word, unwavering. You need to keep an unwavering trust in the Lord, despite his insecurities and questions. Don't we all have questions? We all have questions of what's going on. We all have insecurities, every one of us, on different level. Habakkuk. Begin his prayer by acknowledging the Lord's fame and awesome deeds. Go in Habakkuk 3, 1 through 19. This is touching. I never read it. Some of these, because I'm just going through it myself. So it's touching me right now. His fame. Acknowledge who God is. He is the awesome God. He is the Hobo Jireh. He is everything to us. He's powerful. He's great. He's the only true God. He created this whole world. He knows what he's doing. He acknowledged the fame and the awesome indeed. He used Yahweh's name thrice in the first sentence to, to, to book his proclamation of God's reputation. Habakkuk stand in holy awe of Yahweh, of God. In light of his current situation or circumstances, it is no wonder that he requests Yahweh to repeat his miraculous deeds. You have to read the whole story. He began by praising God for his deliverance in the past. In verse 3, to seven recalls in Israel, flight from Egypt. He a Lord among Messiah, God punishment through pestilence and plague, and God's descending to Sinai to give Moses the law. In the middle of the section, Abaka prays God for his power in bringing salvation. That's another thing we need to pray God. Bringing salvation to this world. He died. Oh my God. He declared Yahweh's strength and might over nature's army the, and kings. In the final section, in verse 16 and 19, Abaka expressed the challenging question of trusting in God despite one's difficult circumstances. That's the key. Praise him. Lift your hands in the midst of it, like David do on Abaka. In the midst of the coming destruction from the Babylon, Abaka's heart was pounding and his lips shaking. His heart was, was pounding and his lips shaking. Don't we be there sometime? Nevertheless, even through the coming invasion will lead to destruction and the starvation. His faith, my God, we need faith. Unchanging faith. Faith. Faith with hope. 
Okay, we need that faith. That secure in faith. Anchor holds grip and trust in Yahweh, reminding steadfastness. And he plead to continue to exalt the Lord. That's what he Continue praising him, no matter what. Continue lifting him up, Cleveland, Bradley County, Polk County. You are around your list continually. No matter what you see going in this community, no matter what you see going, I'm telling you, you keep praising God, keep worshiping, keep praying, okay? Just keep doing it, just like a backup. You need to remember, God, goodness to us during this difficult time is our life will help us pray through the difficult, okay? Let me read again. Remembering God's goodness to us during difficult time in our lives will help us Pray through the difficulties we face. You pray through the difficult. You pray through it. God, he will deliver us. This too shall pass. Okay? Sometimes we go through these things. Like like he said, there's hope. There's hope for the future. There's hope. Okay? Just believe it. You know, we have to go through the mountains sometimes. Go through the valley. We're going to go through some bumps on some, you know, that's part of life. But it's how you respond in it. Keep praying. Keep lifting him up. We all be in there. We all know that. We all experience different things in our life. And and, and it's much more in this. And, and, and like I said, I'm going to close right now because I want you to understand that um, in the midst of I'm going to close right now. In the midst of what you're going through. Because I believe there's somebody else um, who may be seeing the last part of this. You need to make sure you know Jesus, okay? In the midst of your crisis, in the midst of um, what the doctor may have said or what you're dealing with, your health, a lot of people dealing with health issues. God can heal you. He can deliver you, you know? I have all my medical records. Some of you are Google up my book. I have an e-book, Norma Hill, Ferguson Hill, whatever. I put my story, because I want you to see. You need to tell your story so you can see. Doctors, liver, kidney, everything acting up and, and Lord told me when he healed me he healed me so I could tell others so they too can be healed and sometimes we have to express this to let you know that what you are going through for somebody else so when you get healed you tell somebody else that's how God works that's God we know to be we, we're not God so we can't we cannot um, um, tell God what to do he know what he's doing and he's God. So, Father, as I close this, Lord Jesus, I ask you that, Father, all those who under the sound of my voice now and those who will hear this later. Father, dear Lord Jesus, I'm so glad to know that, God, that um, you, dear Father, allowing me each and every Saturday and whenever I can, dear God, Jesus, we're in a state to come into the station, dear God. I'm so glad to know that, God, Jesus, that the joy you have given me in preaching and teaching the peace I can feel when I teach, when I preach, the love, knowing that God, that this is what you created me for. This is my passion. This is what I enjoy doing. I look forward. I get up in the morning looking forward to ministering to people, empowering people, giving people strength, texting people, sending out messages, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that I can do it. But most of all, I'm thanking you, Lord, for giving me this, giving it to me there, God. And many of them who are listening, I hope too they will take their responsibility and their leadership and their ministry, what you've given them. I decree and I declare that they will do it. Not, not just uh, um, 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 listening to me, but he could do the same for you, but you got to want it. You got to have love and passion and desire to be used by God and not to be afraid. God has not given spirit of fear, power, love, sound mind. Get into the word. The word will help you as you read the word. We need to remember time is short and people are dying every day, not just from COVID. People are dying from other diseases, other things. And we have to help them, especially our family and friends and those we know who need Christ. We need to reach them. They are our, on our joining path. So, Father, I thank you, Lord. I ask you to bless us, dear God. Let your face shine upon us. Be gracious unto us. Lord, of your holy comments. Bless the Jones management. Bless Mr. Jones and his family, dear Lord for allowing me to come on the station there, God. Bless all of the, 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 those who I pray with here in the station and those who come in and out this station. Bless this Jones Management Territory. The Holy Spirit is around here. That we, that God, can revival come. We can flow through the revival in this community. The revival is going to start right around here. Right around here. Bring people, bring them to Jesus. Lay hands on the sick. And those who need to be healed, they'll be delivered. I'm ready for it, Jesus. The revival is Cleveland, Tennessee. So we thank you, Lord, for the remnants that flow. Lord, we thank you. Go to church tomorrow. In Jesus' name, I pray. So Cleveland Church of God, 1846. It's my church. Uh, Volunteer Drive, Bishop and, um, Edwin Lipsy, my pastor. I give honor to them. And Sister Lipsy and those other pastors and ministers, I, I, 
I pray with on Sunday morning. All of you all know who you are if you're listening. I don't know, but I want to appreciate the prayers. We pray um, on Monday mornings, uh, on Sunday mornings, and on Thursday, where we pray on Friday. Yes, we was in prayer yesterday, the community, the, the Cleveland Net, that group would pray. It's so many groups, and, 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 and like I said, you have to have a prayer life. And I'm going to get it, because when I start talking about prayer, I can't stop, because prayer is my brand, and I thank God for it. Anyhow, God bless you. Thanks again, all of you watching. Who can watch this later? I appreciate you, and share it. God bless you all. Cleveland, Tennessee, God bless you all, and...